everyone. I'm your professor, Dr. Peggy Simmingson. This online course for fall 2023 is Language in a Multicultural USA. It's a core curriculum course, so you will get credit for part of the core curriculum. So actually, let me put it on this way. All right, so your course description is straight from the course catalog. I'll just read it. It's the relationship between language in the U.S. and social power. This course explores how negative attitudes towards some language varieties and languages spoken in the U.S. arise from social factors rather than features of the language themselves. In addition to studying language varieties, the course shows how American institutions, such as the educational system and the media, reinforce these negative attitudes and contribute to discrimination. So a bit about myself, I've been at UTA since 2008 and I am an associate professor of TESOL. That stands for teaching English to speakers of other languages. So I prepare people to teach ESL to people whose um, native language is not English and they're learning English. So. I was a former bilingual ESL teacher for eight years in public schools in California and Texas, mainly in the Austin area in Texas and in the San Diego area and Santa Barbara area in California. And I was also a bilingual reading specialist. My master's degree is in reading education and my PhD is in curriculum and instruction with a specialization in language and literacy studies at UT Austin for the PhD. Um, I grew up in Alaska in Anchorage and Fairbanks and Southern California in San Diego and then college at Santa Barbara, UC Santa Barbara. And then I've lived in Texas and Austin and in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I am a fifth generation Texan. For fun, I like to read, go to museums, do yoga. I do pure bar for exercise and I love to lift weights. Okay, I research um, online learning, digital learning. I'm very interested in the future of learning and how rapidly it's changing. I am a big fan of online teaching and learning because it's so flexible. It helps people to learn where they are. And you should know that I'm easy to reach. I do lots of videos. I will be integrating technology into the course, but don't be scared of it if technology is not your thing. Um, it's there if you need it but I'll mainly be introducing some videos and podcasts and things like that into the course. And we may use some online polling tools, but they are very easy to use. Okay, so let's talk about the course. So a, a few slides on the course itself. So what are we going to talk about and learn about? Some of the big questions we'll tac tackle include, what is language? Is there a correct way to speak? Why do different dialects exist? So dialects are regional varieties or types within a language. Why don't people like the way some people speak? Would it be better or easier if we all spoke the same way? So we call that standardized American English. Do you know, is it, what is it? Why? What other languages are spoken in the US and why? And that's kind of a dynamic thing. And it also varies greatly from state to state. What are the predominant languages? So um, here's some questions to ponder. You may be asked about these on the discussion board, um, you know, to pick from, to talk about. So th just think about these. Everyone has ideas, think about these. What is grammar? What do you remember about what your high school English teacher told you about using grammar? What, you know, what roles did you learn? What languages and or dialects do you speak? So a dialect is a regional variety. What dialect of each language do you think you speak? Is there a dialect of English you're more familiar with much more than others? Is there a dialect of English you do not like as much? Why? Do you have any pet peeves about language? That is, is there anything about the way people use language that you dislike? Why do you dislike it? So think about these. I'm probably going to ask you the second one on the introduction. What languages and dialects do you speak? Just because it's interesting to hear about different people's experiences. Like I speak Spanish and English. 
How do linguists view language and grammar? So a linguist is someone who takes a scientific approach to understanding the uniquely human ability to use language, just like how a biologist who wants to know how dolphins swim will observe dolphins swimming, linguists observe real language users to learn how language works. And it's important to know that they view, linguists view all language practices as valid, even if they vary across speakers. So we'll learn about the, the idea of prescriptive grammar versus descriptive grammar. And prescriptive is like the way that people think you ought to speak, it's prescribed, whereas descriptive is more observational, how people actually use language. How do linguists view language and grammar? So linguists never use the terms correct or incorrect when talking about grammar. And grammar is simply the system of rules a speaker uses to put together words and sentences. A couple more big ideas about this course topic. How do linguists view language and grammar? Rules differ across all languages and rules differ across dialects. And we're going to focus on how some rules are highly stigmatized in society. OK, let's move over into how the course works. So I'll give you a few big ideas, but I really encourage you to read the course syllabus carefully. Maybe read it twice, hit the due dates in your calendar, or just be sure you know where to look in the syllabus for the due dates. That's going to be your, one of the most crucial aspects of the course, is just keeping up with what's due when. So your calendar is going to be one of the more important things to stay on top of. So you'll be doing asynchronous work. That means there's no live sessions to attend, you'll, but it's not entirely self-paced. There are due dates each week, and most things are due on Sunday, Sunday night, but you can always turn it in earlier. You absolutely do not need to do work on the weekend, but the weekend is there if you need it. Most weeks you'll have a short lecture or videos, and you'll always have readings to do. And then at the end of the week, you'll reflect and synthesize through discussions, quizzes, and assignments. A couple of goals for the course. You can read this on your own, but just exposure and engagement with course content and ideas. We want you to reflect on how this course is meaningful to you outside of the classroom. Develop your critical thinking skills. Develop your metacognition skills. Metacognition is your awareness of your own thinking. So really dive deep when you're reading. Take notes while you read and listen so that you can keep track of your own ideas and thinking and become more self-aware of your own beliefs and viewpoints on these topics. We'll uh, do online discussions, and then we want you to create awareness and build your own knowledge base about this concept of language and social power and all its complexities, and, and also to use this knowledge and awareness for any positive change. Okay, so get the textbook. There are six copies of this textbook on reserve through the UTA library. So there's three copies um, in the self-checkout machine, I believe, in the central library. That's the main library. And then there are three copies, I believe, they said in the West Campus parking garage self-checkout machine. All of this information is in the course syllabus. You can also call the Central Library or use their live chat and ask them about um, the self-checkout machines. I'm less familiar with the self-checkout machines. Okay, so be sure you have the second edition of this book, not the third edition. It has to be the second edition. We'll also be using a book um, called Do You Speak American? But Do You Speak American is already scanned for you and it's, it'll be on Canvas. Okay, so those are our main readings. Um, you can read about the grading in the syllabus, but we're using points and rubrics to grade. And grades will be posted about a week after the assignment is due. So you'll have homework assignments in this class each week. You'll also be doing quizzes, which are open book. They are going to be timed, but they are open book. OK, so assignments, so discussion. So participation includes online discussions. You need to reply to two peers. Review the discussion rubric and the syllabus before you do the discussion. So this is a really crucial part of the course. Um, and you need to do the readings first before you do the discussion. So, Read first, 
Be sure you understand the discussion rubric. It'll be posted on Canvas as well. And then do your discussion post, go through it, make sure there's no like misspelled words and try to make it look really polished. I know we're talking about different language varieties in this class, but you wanna take a mostly formal tone on the discussion board um, and then go through it and then post it. And then you need to do two replies to peers. Please try to post your replies as early in the week as possible, which means try to post as early in the week as possible. But you can do replies before you do your post if other people have already posted. And since there's 35 people in the class, it's highly likely that people are gonna start posting earlier than the due date. Do not wait until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday to do your post, because then no one will see, no one will see it. Um, and we want to have dialogue. Okay, so we'll do a final project in the class. You will get guidance, and there's some description of it in the course syllabus, and you'll work on it along the way in the class. It's not something you're going to cobble together at the very end. Okay, so course schedule. So pay attention to the course schedule and the syllabus, and there's always something due each week and something to read. So again, with online classes, staying on top of what's due and what you need to read is the most crucial part of the class. Um, you need to get your textbook, so be sure you have your main textbook, English with an accent, or have a plan to check it out from the UTA library, but just know that other people may have it checked out. So you can't always count on the reserve book being there when you need it. So plan ahead. Um, maybe read ahead if you're using the reserve book. Okay, and then next steps, read through the syllabus carefully and read through uh, module one on Canvas, and then introduce yourself on the discussion board number one for this week, for the beginning of the class, and then re two replies to peers. Okay, please do not use chat GPT for your discussion board posts. I will be able to see if it's written by AI because AI uses a very, 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 very stilted sort of way of writing. So um, this, diagram I'm going to post on Canvas. Oops, you can't see the whole thing. But, you know, do not use ChatGPT to complete an, an entire assignment. You can use it to help you get started on an assignment to brainstorm. You can, you can use it to help you edit. Like I use Grammarly, which is an AI tool, and Grammarly revises my spelling. It helps me with my punctuation, word usage, etc. So I use Grammarly to help improve my own writing. And it even helps me improve my emails. So I love Grammarly. Um, that's an example of AI helping make your product better. But definitely do not use ChatGPT to create your entire assignment. Big, huge, huge no on that. Um, so ask me if you're not sure about using how to use ChatGPT if you're using it. Um, definitely encourage your own original thinking and I'll work. So I'm easy to reach. You can email me. I can respond to you through direct message on Teams. You can email me through Canvas email. So those are three ways to get a hold of me. You can also use the bookings tool to set up a meeting with me from anytime Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I do one-on-one -on -one virtual um, co video conferencing, which is like virtual office hours. And so I can do that if my schedule is available for you. So use the bookings tool to make an appointment with me. And I do check email all the time, so even on the weekend. That is it, and I hope you have a great semester.